Hi, I'm Christopher Warnock of Renaissance Astrology. Today I want to talk about protection talismans and is algal bad? Um, yeah, particularly because there seems to be a lot of, you know, misinformation and even fear mongering that's kind of being pushed out there as far as algal. Um, so, you know, after wealth talismans, protection talismans are probably our most popular uh, talismans. Um, particularly spiritual protection talismans or enemy protection talismans. I think that, um, you know, one thing that is useful to talk about right from the get-go is that I think that people tend to think of malefic spiritual attack or curses, however you want to phrase that, as being consciously caused by, by a magic user, particularly a professional magic user. So in other words, there's some witch out there and they're putting a spell on me or something like that. What we need to realize is that if you have a close emotional connection to someone, you also have a spiritual connection. And so, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, your family, close friends, if somebody like that, if you have a close emotional relationship with, is upset or angry with you, that can cause negative spiritual effects. Um, so I think in a lot of situations, if there is malefic spiritual attack, it can be caused by um, this kind of anger or, you know, someone being just really out of sorts with you that has a close emotional connection to you. In fact, one of the classic types of curses is a family curse. If your, your father or mother curse you, that's traditionally considered to be extremely powerful. And obviously your mother and father are, are generally not going to be professional magic users or casting spells. Um, so it's interesting because, you know, uh, if you look at 16th and 17th century England, we have a lot of written sources from it's where a lot of our traditional astrology, medieval Renaissance astrology in English comes from. Their view of witches was that they had a natural ability uh, to, to do a curse. Essentially, they had a close spiritual connection to all people. If they ill-wished you, and the, the, the classic example is if you, you go and say, hey, they want to borrow your, you know, something from you, or they're asking for alms or something, and you say no, and they just they say, oh, you know, I hope your cattle die. And that was it. They didn't have to do anything other than basically ill wish you. Um, and so I think that's important to keep in mind um, when we think about this, is that we're not just talking about some kind of Harry Potter magic, you know, some elaborate spell thing, but the fact that there's an inherent spiritual connection between people and that can be used both for good or for evil. And it can often be done unconsciously. I think in a lot of situations when this is happening, people are not even, they're angry at you, you know, but they're not necessarily, you know, wanting to consciously, you know, cause a, cause a curse or whatever, but it can have that effect. Um, so really what this is pointing to is that we're bathed in this sort of sea of positive and negative spiritual effects, which are sort of continually washing over us. And, you know, I think it makes sense to have spiritual protection talismans because there's a, you know, we do end up facing negativity and bad vibes, you know, in many forms. People can get jealous of us. Even if they don't have a strong um, emotional connection to us, they can still have an, a negative effect. Um, so I think that makes a lot of sense to have a spiritual protection talisman. It's sort of like, I think of it as a filter or a shield. Um, the it, What's helping to maybe reduce the influence, reduce the sort of vibes or whatever they're coming at you, it doesn't remove the underlying curse um, or stop entirely stop the spiritual attack. It's just sort of cutting down the intensity. Um, you know, personally, I don't know how to remove curses. Um, it's interesting because um, I do uh, diagnose curses with Hori astrology. Hori astrology is a type of astro traditional astrology where you use the time of the question. And in fact, Hori astrology is probably the best mechanism that I know for that sort of diagnosis. So I, I do get a, a good amount of those questions. Um, but it's interesting because if someone asks me a marriage question, they're not then saying, okay, well, take care of the marriage for me. But for some reason, with the curse questions, there's this expectation that, oh, well, I'm going to, I have to be able to remove the curse. And there's a disappointment that, oh, well, I can't do that. But it's, again, it's a bit like a, you know, a, a GP, you know, or, or your, you know, family doctor. You go to them, they might be able to give you some tests to tell you if you have cancer, but they're not going to automatically be able to cure it. Um, for that, you need a specialist. And in fact, there was a person, you know, many years ago when I first started doing this that I got in touch with um, who, um, really like to do these. I mean, they were really into it and they, you know, I, they, I would talk to them like, yeah, I love, love doing removing curses. It's really great. And I get great results. So I would refer people to this person. And then strangely, I sort of lost contact with them. And then I found out that they mysteriously died all of a sudden. So um, obviously the, the removal is a much bigger deal, much more serious. And so I'm 
perfectly happy to stay with my expertise, which is basically a diagnosis, and then also, like I said, provide the talismans, which, again, don't remove the curse, don't stop it entirely, but they can and help cut down the, the magnitude of it. Um, and I think that, you know, like I said, I think horror is probably the best method for diagnosing the curse. We're not going to be able to get someone's name out of it. Um, you know, we can pretty much tell whether there is a malefic spiritual attack currently affecting someone. Um, and I would say probably in about a quarter to a third of the charts that I do that we get the indications that there is, in fact, a active malefic attack. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily um, come from someone who's consciously cursing you. It can be unconscious. We potentially can get some ideas about the type of person, you know, maybe the relationship. But that's not always true of the chart. Um, but if it turns out that the person is not cursed, you know, does not under currently under a malefic spiritual attack, generally that chart showing the person still having trouble. So, you know, it fits. They're having all sorts of personal difficulties or problems or whatever, but it's not necessarily due to the curse. So that's actually useful. Useful information, again, doesn't stop the curse. And again, I don't have any resources as far as anyone to refer to for actually removing it. Um, the best I can do is, um, like I said, suggest talismans. Um, the other thing I would say about this is that people tend to throw around the I'm cursed. Anytime something bad happens, that's obviously sort of this malefic spiritual attack. I, I kind of, in a way, refer to this as the a, a general syndrome I call the who stole my pencil syndrome. And how many times have you lost your pencil or lost something and you're like, oh, who stole it? Somebody took it, assuming that this automatically is some malefic, you know, conscious intervention that's messing you up deliberately and you lost it. Um, so it's a lot of things that go on. Bad, just because bad stuff happens does not mean that you're cursed. I mean, there's cycles of things. I mean, you, you can have all sorts of bad things happen to you, and it doesn't necessarily mean that someone's out there cursing you or there's malefic spiritual attack. Um, and again, that's why the horror is very useful because it can help give you an idea of, of you know what's going on. And again, most of the time it's not. Sometimes it is. Um, so um, I think, though, that increasingly we are living in these milieus where magic is more and more getting used. Um, so it's something that, you know, there's a, a zillions of people out there doing magic now. Um, you know, particularly if you're into spiritual stuff or into, you know, the sort of magical stuff, then yeah, you may be coming into contact with it. So again, another reason why you might want to think about spiritual protection talisman or protection talismans. Um, you know, I, I have algal figures prominently in my fixed star altar, um, and I light a candle in front of that altar every day and, you know, I like to, you know, it's probably a good idea. I should actually do it myself. I should go out and do another consecration of algal, despite the fact I have about four algal talismans, um, just to keep that energy going, to keep that protection going, sort of, you know, background noise, hopefully in, in, in my case. Um, but, you know, again, I think it's something that's good to take seriously, but not get overly fearful or paranoid about. So at Renaissance Astrology, we have a wide selection of different types of spiritual protection talismans. Um, you can see the link there on the, on the page. Um, and definitely our most popular and the most powerful spiritual and enemy protection talisman we have is Algol. Um, Algol is the head of the Gorgon Medusa as a fixed star. Um, said to act like a mirror, so anything that negative that's thrown at you, it throws it right back at the person you know, who sent it at you, um, which is probably about as aggressive as I would be willing to get, but you know, fair enough as far as I'm concerned. If they're going to throw it at you, they get it back at you. Um, now, what I will say about Algol, and this is something I experienced myself, and I've had many, many, I couldn't tell you how many clients, 50 clients, reported to me, um, that uh, Algol is kind of like a pit bull, guard dog, and when you start working with it for the first time, that it can be a little rambunctious and cause electrical or electronic or internet interference, and that it sort of settles down. N nothing, you know, super severe, um, you know, and temporary. Um, and then it starts going out there and, you know, going after the, your enemies and actively protecting you. So, um, you know, that's really the only negative effect and it's a temporary one that I've ever experienced. However, there is a significant amount of what I consider to be misinformation and even, like I said, fear mongering that's being put out there about algal as a talisman. So people Google algal and they come up with the predictive effects of algal. Now, predictively, in a natal chart in particular, but even in a horary, if algal shows up, it's going to have a it's going to have a negative uh, prediction. It's going to be it's considered to be malefic. So people immediately freak out. Algal's bad. Oh, better run away from that. I'm scared um, because there is a lot of fear. You know, in this, you know, a lot of times people are coming into this in a sort of fearful state. 
and they see the slightest thing that's negative and they just it just freaks them out. So what I would say about that is that there's a big difference in, in many cases between what the star predicts and then what it's used as a talisman, and algal is a good example of that. And then the question is bad for who? I mean, it, in terms of the malefic effect, yeah, the, the, your enemy is going to have a malefic effect from it. He's not going to like it at all. It's like, a, again, like a pit bull. You know, your family gets along great with him. He's great with the family. But boy, if you're a burglar trying to break in the house, you're not going to be liking that. You're going to think that that, that pit bull is pretty negative when it comes after you. So um, in, in a sense, it sort of makes me think of the sort of wrathful deities in Buddhism. These are sort of, you know, whatever, you know, their source, they're, they're malefic but they're convinced to be protective of the Buddha and the Dharma. And, you know, they might look a little crazy if you look like at a, at a Tonka or the, you know, the, the hanging tapestries. They've got flames and fire all over them. But again, that's all directed out with the enemies of, of, uh, of, of Buddhism or Dharma or, or whatever. So that's what I'd say about algal. It's very powerful, very good protective talisman. And that negativity, in my experience, is directed outwards. But, you know... I think that that's something that, you know, again, that people have different views about. But as an example for that, I just got a, a testimonial from a client with an algal talisman, and I thought I would just briefly give you a little bit from it. Um, it's, it's, again, posted on the, you know, on the, on the page here. You can take a look at it. And the, the, the person said to me, said, I wanted to reach out to you and give you an update um, to get the consecration for the algal talisman that I bought. I said, I'm speechless because since I received it, a couple days ago, I felt an immediate sense of immense sense of peace, and my anxiety has decreased. I no longer have that sense of persecution I've had for years. I feel an immense nurturing love, which is odd because I wasn't expecting this feeling at all. Well, so love is not, you know, immense feeling of peace is not something that I would necessarily expect from algal, but I think it's about 180 degrees away from this idea that this is some terrible, horrible, freaky thing that you should run away from. And certainly, I have definitely had multiple conversations with experienced magic users that really swear by algal as a protective talisman. They're really sold on it and had people say that. Um, and I have not had anyone come to me and say, oh, they've had all sorts of terrible, horrible things happening because of algal. Um, but really, my primary purpose here is, is not to try to convince people and argue people into saying algal is good, but to just kind of, you know, put out a little bit of, you know, corrective to that misinformation, to the, just the idea of the 100% algal is bad and I'm freaked out by it. Um, you really need to, th you know, find what resonates for you. Um, I just say don't surrender to fear, respect your intuition. And um, we do also have lots of other effective spiritual protection talismans like Vega. Again, you can see the links um, on, the, on the YouTube page here, or Procyon, or Antares. Uh, these are all really excellent spiritual protection talismans. Um, I want to also mention some other very uh, special protection talismans. For example, the Kazemi moon talisman. This is when the moon is within 16 minutes of the sun. Um, it's very special, and this is great for basic invisibility. Keep yourself under the radar. You're not even being seen. I think that's a great uh, approach to dealing with protection talismans. Another very interesting one that we've got, we've just got in stock not too long ago is the 17th Mansion, which is great for protection of your house, particularly from thieves and burglars and things like that. So physical protection, really excellent. Now, another thing I'd like to put out there is that a lot of times people's reaction is, you know, that I'm under attack, so I'm going to push back, or I need to have, you know, algal, you know, which is going to be this very active defense or whatever. Another way of approaching this, which, you know, particularly, like I said, if you're talking about family members or something or someone who's close to you, you might want to consider, but even with everybody, it's something worth considering, is to take a different tack. So instead of shove, shove back, um, you could do what uh, serious, and serious is good for peace and reconciliation. Now, that is interesting because that could really solve the problem. I mean, the, the seriousness isn't necessarily going to do it all by itself, but if you're able to reconcile with the person, if you're able to be peaceful with the person, that removes the problem. And that's, you know, again, the talisman isn't necessarily going to do that all by itself, but it's an approach you should definitely consider. So again, all these talismans and links or stuff are on the YouTube page. So I hope that's useful. I mean, I've got, like I said, I got this direct testimonial about algal that kind of started the ball rolling. Such a positive testimonial. I thought, you know, I need to put this out there and just counter some of this negative and misinformation that's been getting out there about algal. Like I said, this is, um, I only deal with the archangelic or angelic manifestations of these planets, and my dealings with algal have definitely been, been positive, uh, and I can definitely personally recommend it as a talisman. But again, 
if it's if you're worried about it, that's something you know you can take seriously, and there's all sorts of different other options. But again, ultimately, I think it makes sense to uh, a spiritual ta a protection talisman or protection talisman is uh, useful, and there's an incredible number of options uh, that you can take, uh, and you can check them out at the Renaissance Astrology website.